Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today, a town walk around Padstow. Our walk today comes from Town Walks in Cornwall. It's walk number nine, Padstow. Padstow is on the north coast of Cornwall on the Camel Estuary near Weybridge. A quick town walk today, it's one and three quarter miles long and takes us, wriggles around the little streets here, the quaint streets and quiet lanes of Padstow. We're gonna take a little excursion, a detour up towards Prideau Place where they've got a deer park too. Hopefully the deers will be scampering around the field. So let's see what we can see. Today the town might look incredibly quiet. In a few years, if you're watching this, you might wonder why. Think back. It is just we're just coming out of another lockdown. Yeah, what are we? So we're April 2021. Yes, indeed. So if you are watching this in uh, 2031, congratulations. Obviously Pesto's everything was still fine. Here, and it will never be this quiet again, will it? But yeah. <laughs> enjoy. Leave a comment. <laughs> So the book that we're using today suggests that you park here. This is a South Key car park. So currently as of April 2021. If you park in your car here, two to four hours, £3.70. This one is busy. There are plenty of other car parks here in Padstow. Our first instruction is from the car park, turn right along the road. Go left around Old Key House and on South Key, immediately left up Strand Street. What a tiny little cottage. I'm guessing it's just the blue bit. Goodness me, not many rooms in there, is there? Where? No garden, no space for your car. So there's lots of instructions in this little book and we don't want to overwhelm the videos with turn left, turn right, and up this road, down that road. So you'll have to buy the book. <laughs> if you can get a copy. However, what I think we'll do is just have a little look around and see where it takes us and show you some beautiful little cottages and images of birthday. We'll show you what tickles our fancies. Part of the reason it'll be quiet today, a lot of the holiday homes, and uh, most of these places in Pazzo are holiday homes, notable by the key boxes outside, are not open yet. I don't know what percentage are holiday homes and what percentage are lived in these days, but um, there's another holiday home. <laughs> That's quite a stunning building, isn't it? It is now a holiday cottage or home. I wonder what it was for. Lovely little room up there. I know, wouldn't you just adore to be up there? If you were a little child and that was your bedroom window, you'd be hanging out of there, wouldn't you? Just grinning. Gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. In years gone by, Padstow was very noted for its shipbuilding, best in the area, and there's a strong connection with boats, and we've just found the what? RNLI. Yeah, the lifeboat um, building, although uh, it must have a very small boat. <laughs> why, why is it back here, away from the harbour? Perhaps it's just like their net Storage. Lock. Yeah. Storage, yeah. <laughs> So our walk actually takes us up to the church, right? but we can have a little detour. Down here? Yeah. So this is Middle Street and we're going to go and take a look at the almshouses. The Grade 2 listed almshouses were built in 1875, one of the cottages in the complex being built as a memorial to John Tridwen, not quite sure how you pronounce that one local shipbuilder who died in 1870. They were renovated and renamed Tridwen Court in January 1989. I think I would have been really chuffed to have lived in one of these little almshouses. They're so cute, aren't they? Oh, they're all lovely. Yeah. Yeah. 
So we're heading up Barry's Lane. This is Barry's Lane, this is. Do you think Baza? you'll mind? I don't know. He's not here at the moment. No. Well, if we quit, we'll be all right. <laughs> Properties look amazing with this hung slate on their walls. I guess that's a natural local slate. Is it Delabel slate? Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. It what the colours in it though? Each I know. slate is different, isn't it? And almost a different size and shape. It's like we'll take the best bit of that one. Got a curious archway in their garden. I'm just trying to figure out what it is. Do you think that's for roses and climbers? Yeah, it's quite ornate, isn't it? It's going to look fabulous quite when it's bare covered. At the moment, isn't it? Oh, I see. So the tunnel of arches is actually covering a separate footpath to the house behind. And look at this, quite remarkable. It looks like two houses just designated by the yellow and blue paint. Don't know if the camera's picking it up against the light, but look, down, across, and that's my window and my door. Duke Street. Where are we going now? So in the cobbles we have a cross. What you found? It's like a cross shape marked out and the cobbles just wondered why. Do you think that makes this a uh, church house? Ah, oh, okay. Fabulous house, isn't it? Love the gate and the porch oh, no. and the windows. Cross house. Look incredibly old, isn't it? Vicarage, oh, maybe? The absolute porch on it. That house back there, cross house. Yeah, so from what I know of Padstow, so Padstow is an incredibly old port effectively it was a harbour and it was on the pilgrimage route wasn't it so pilgrims would have come across from ireland yeah, yeah. to here padstow is actually named after the pa uh, patron saint of pa padstow is st petrock and he floated across from ireland on a coracle <laughs> yes. isn't that right so <laughs> saints um would have influenced how Padstow was seen and developed, and developed so maybe yeah. that's how it got its name. So that could have been an early boarding house for all the, oh, of all the, all the yes. um, pilgrims. I do like this little church. It feels quite. It feels like a sanctuary. The ornate trees. The the fact that they're quite mature makes it feel quite cosy in a way. That's the word I was looking for, cosy. Also feels as though it's been here a very, very long time. The little tiny stones, little tiny windows, and the oddly shaped door. It just feels old. Church of St. Petrop Major. In this valley, it said the gospel was first preached in 518 by St. Petrock, who came from Ireland in a coracle. St. Petrock's church, as it is today, is the third church to occupy this site. A sixth century church was destroyed by the Vikings in AD 981, and a remnant from this time is the form of a four hold Celtic cross, which can be seen on the bank to the left of the south door. Okay, this well is this is the south door because door, they're saying it's the one you go through to can enter the church. Would it be to the left as you walk in or to the left as you walk out? Because there is a cross there and there is a cross over there. Well, that one up there looks quite new. That's but that's on the left, <laughs> not our right. <laughs> oh, I reckon it's this one, Andrew. We're just the wrong way round. <laughs> wow. Looks older, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I reckon it's that one. Well, they're saying it's from the 6th century. From the 6th century. Yeah. It's in very good condition. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't think I'd look like that after 1400 years. It goes on to say that the next church was built in the 12th century and the bottom section of the tower dates from this time. <laughs> Tell, it tells us that the bell works. So it says the present church was built in the mid 15th century and is grade one listed. It has a little stained glass resulting in a paley lit tranquil interior. It has a beautiful carved medieval font depicting the 12 apostles. Oh, wow. There you go yeah. then. See? 12 apostles. It's lovely through the bells. Yeah. Should have been counting them. What time is it? 11 o'clock. That's why I'm hungry. <laughs> Onwards, I think we're going up to Prido Place now. It's not open to the public at the moment, but we can certainly get a few shots of it from outside. Beautiful manor house, isn't it, Elizabethan? A couple of things I just want to show you in the graveyard as well. Cause I, yeah, <laughs> oh, no. I like a graveyard. Who Come doesn't? On. So what do you notice on these gravestones, Sarah? Lichen, lichen. Well, there is that. What else do you notice? Master Mariner. Yeah. He departed this life in 1857. He's 92. Thomas Hambly Harvey, same family. Master Mariner. Oh, a bit later, 1895, and his wife. So, did you start off being a mariner, and then you became a master mariner because of your experience? I guess. Yeah. Or. It's another one. John Courtney, master mariner. Pass that knowledge on. Does that mean that you don't have to go up in the crow's nest anymore? Maybe. So whilst Andrew was reading all the gravestones for the Master Mariner bit, I did notice that one of these he was pointing to is actually the daughter of one of those Master Mariners. So she's called Emma Courtney and she died at the age of seven. Now what I'm interested in, and I don't understand, is the little verse that's inscribed on this headstone. So let me just read it out to you. It says, bearing in mind she's seven. This precious babe no actual sin could know, yet by man's fall polluted all around, so by her Jesus' blood and righteousness stands justified, complete with glory crowned. So I don't, I, I don't quite understand that. This precious babe no actual sin could, could know, yes, yeah, she's too young, yet by man's fall polluted all around. What's that alluding to? This is 1831. Is this something to do with the pollution, say polluted water maybe? Perhaps perhaps they suspected something like cholera. Is, is this the time when we were cleaning up Victorian streets and they started to understand cholera? I don't know. What a strange line. Yet by man's fall polluted all around. It does suggest that man had something to do with her death. Now, if I can tear you away from this fascinating graveyard. Why are graveyards so no, fascinating so to me, us? No. Weird, isn't it? <laughs> Where are we going? We're going up the hill towards Prido Place now. Okay, come on then, let's go. Okay, we're coming up to the house. Really excited to see the deer. Is it a flock of deer, herd of deer? However, it's just lovely to see them. We've been up here before and they just walk across the field here. Oh yes, I can see them. The herd of fallow deer at Prido Place is thought to be one of the oldest herds in the country, possibly dating back to the Roman era. Legend has it that if the deer die out, then so does the Prido family. Did you see the deer? Did you? Not there. Yeah. They're quite a way away, aren't they? They've got a feeder up there. Is it the little ones that are running around? Some very tiny ones up there, aren't they? Yeah, it'd yeah. be lovely to think they're babies, wouldn't it? I think it's amazing. Is he's so close to quite a biggish town. And you've got this here. I know. Yeah. Such a contrast, isn't it? So peaceful and quiet. This is one coming down here. I wonder if we can get a better shot. Okay, I've got one joke today. Only 
one. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's not very good. Okay. So this is just a warning, but now is the joke, and it's not very good. <laughs> right? So this is the deer park. Yeah. How much is it? <laughs> I told you it was no good. Oh dear. Dear of him, he can't think of anything. From our King's England book, Cornwall, it says of Priddo Place, said to stand where a monastery was destroyed by the Danes. Priddo Place is one of the lovely sights that come upon us suddenly in our countryside. There is a charming gateway by the roadside. Terraced lawn makes a fine setting for the stately Elizabethan house with the embattled walls creepered here and there, projecting wings and bays, mullioned windows and two-storied porch. A fine magnolia climbs to the parapet, hedges of myrtle and tamarisk are in the garden, and deer roam in the park. Of noisy rooks and crows around us today. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I've been video bombed by crows. <laughs> you got a gun? <laughs> no! Can't do that. Where are we going? Back down the hill. Oh, okay. That's it, is it? That's it. Okay, back down the hill. We are tre retracing our steps towards the Dowager House for Prideau Place and then heading back down into town in the harbour. Found it! I found it! High Street! High Street! Oh, no. oh dear. You left your funny bone at home today, didn't you? What's that? Yeah. That is a hem of helichrysum. Oh, right, yeah. And what's that? Lavender. Oh, yeah. What's that there, like? Uh, it's an onion flower. Okay, what's that? <laughs> a sky flower. <laughs> what a dish. <laughs> it's so pretty and it's so quiet and so still today. Once we finish the vloggy thing, this one. I think we should come back and do a virtual walk of the same route. The sun's out now. I think it would look amazing. There's a sign go? down there saying anybody loitering or causing a nuisance can be fined. Well, you better scarp her quick. Let's hope they haven't got CCTV. No, it looks a bit old for that. Come on, we're Some going... Some kind of sketching stuff. <laughs> Some curious things here, Sarah. Yes. First of all, a VR post box. I, I do like post boxes. I know, you've got a bit of a thing about them, haven't you? Nice, isn't it? Look yeah. at that. He looks happy. He does. And if I lived here, I'd have this house. Why? Look what it's called. Panion. Panion. <laughs> An unmodernised house in Padstow, shot Corra. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is. It's in the surround over the door. Yeah. I was admiring that. So would that be George and do you think that house? Yeah. Townhouse, George yeah. and Townhouse. Just like that, residential gone, back into shops, all of the commercial bits, and smell of pasties.
I'm following you. You look like a man on a mission. I'm going to show you a relic from World War II. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. That'd be interesting. It's quite new compared with everything else here, isn't it? This. Don't get too close. Second World War mine. Yeah. It's not that, though. Oh, I was going to say, it's not that impressive. <laughs> no, the thing I wanted to show you is at the end of the pier. Ah, I see what it is. Come Down on. there. Do you know what it is then? <laughs> yeah. Pillbox. Yeah. It's an old uh, World War II Did sort of gun emplacement. Did you shut up though? You can't actually get inside this one. Must be using it for storage then I reckon for the harbour here. Oh, possibly, yeah. So the river behind me gets silted up quite frequently and Harbour Commission removes tons and tons of sands every year using a dredger. In fact, if you hear the groaning sand in a minute, they're doing it currently. If you go around the corner, you will find Doom Bar. The bar was invoked by a mermaid after she was mistakenly shot for being a seal. So this, the legend kind of says that she threw up this big storm and that's how the bar was created. Did you just say that there's a legend about a mermaid being shot because she looked like a seal. Yeah, and I, I guess the legend, there's lots of ballads about it as well, but she's said to have invoked such a violent storm and been so angry for being shot that the sand came in and created the bar. Ah. You're not convinced? Well, it seems quite an extreme length to go to just to get retribution on one person that shot her. Never cross a mermaid. <laughs> It's not worth it. Oh, do, well, don't even go that far. Never cross a woman. Our walk today comes from Town Walks in Cornwall. It's walk number nine, Padstow. 
our wander around Pasto. I have so enjoyed discovering a lot more about Pasto. The things I didn't know, I didn't realise it was so connected to the Pilgrim's Way. No, that's right. And also, obviously, it's maritime history here, yeah. which goes back years, doesn't it? Yeah. Love wandering around the streets. Every house is unique and individual. You start wondering who lived there. Absolutely. If, if the buildings could tell a story, <laughs> what a story that would be. Absolutely. I, I think there would be many. So yeah. the, the walk itself, the instructions work really well. The map is quite small, isn't it? So relating instructions and map is tricky. It's also a short little walk as well. It's under two miles, this one. But if you find yourself in Padstow, it's well worth exploring. Absolutely. Score? Nine out of ten for me. Excellent. Nine out of ten from me too. Well done, Padstow. So if you want to find out where we've been and what we've been doing, you can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook as well. If you've enjoyed today's video, then please give us a like, send us a comment. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. It helps us out.